Good evening. 19 children were shot dead at school in Uvalde, Texas, yesterday. They were all under the age of 12, slaughtered in their classroom by an 18-year-old maniac who just bought the guns he used for his 18th birthday present. These children's parents took them to school yesterday morning, their young hearts joyful with excitement, for another day of education and fun with their friends. But they never went home and they're never going home. And those parents will never recover now from the loss of their children. They were slaughtered by this 18-year-old lunatic who was then shot dead by police in the deadliest school massacre since Sandy Hook, where 20 children and six adults were killed in another senseless tragedy that devastated the world. That was 10 years ago. And what's changed? Well, nothing is the staggering answer. America's endured more than 900 school shootings since Sandy Hook, including 27 this year alone. In fact, there have been more mass shootings in 2022 in America than days of the year so far. Some politicians, like Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut, where Sandy Hook happened, can't understand why. What are we doing? Why are you here? This isn't inevitable. These kids weren't unlucky. This only happens in this country. He's right. Whichever side of the gun debate you're on, America has a uniquely hideous record for gun deaths and mass shootings against the world's richest countries. Only in America should mean the opportunity for any person to aspire to be anything they want to be in the most successful country on earth. It shouldn't be the mournful lament we hear every time a maniac opens fire on innocent children in a place that's supposed to be happiest and safest. History doesn't have to repeat itself, but with mass shootings in America, with school shootings, it does, again and again and again. And the big question is why? Steve Kerr, who's the coach of the Golden State Warriors basketball team, one of the biggest names in U.S. sport, spoke for many last night. Since we left shoot-around, 14 children were killed 400 miles from here. And a, and a teacher. And in the last 10 days, we've had elderly black people killed in a supermarket in Buffalo. We've had Asian churchgoers killed in Southern California, and now we have children murdered at school. When are we going to do something? Well, it's a very good question, isn't it? I understand his anger and passion, not least because his own father was killed in a terrorist attack in Beirut, so he understands pain and grief and loss. I also understand that few issues are as impassioned or as divisive in America as guns. It's not for me, as a non-US citizen, to tell Americans the laws that they should have. I learned the hard way after Sandy Hook that a British accent shouting about gun control to Americans goes down about as well as an American accent telling Brits to abolish the monarchy would go down. So let me say this instead. I understand and respect the constitutional right of American people to own guns under the Second Amendment. That was a right ratified by the Supreme Court in 2008. But surely there must be some things that all parties can agree on. Opponents of new gun laws say they wouldn't stop shootings because criminals will still get hold of them. But by that logic, why have any laws against anything? We have laws against murder, but we know it won't stop all murders. We just hope it will reduce the number of murders. The shooter, Salvador Ramos, legally spent $5,000 buying two AR-15 semi-automatic rifles and 375 rounds of ammunition just a few days after his 18th birthday. And yet, he couldn't have legally bought a beer in Texas for another three years. Nor could he have bought a Kinder Surprise chocolate egg anywhere in America because they're banned over the choking thread of the toys inside. You don't have to be pro or anti-gun control to realise this is bafflingly inconsistent. Just as it seems absurd that there's no law enforcing universal background checks on all gun sales when 91% of Americans in the polls want them to happen. And those background checks must include all potentially relevant information. Ramos was known to police after violent arguments with his drug-abusing mother and firing BB guns. And we now know he posted his plan to attack a school on Facebook before carrying it out. The supermarket shooter in Buffalo, New York, Peyton Gendron, was also 18 when he murdered 10 black people in a white supremacist rampage just 10 days ago. He bought his guns legally too and was also known to police after threatening to shoot up a school. The Sandy Hook shooter, Adam Lanza, was 20. 
and banning people from being able to buy guns until they're 21 won't stop all young men like this getting their hands on guns. But shouldn't we at least make it more difficult for them? There were calls today for more armed security at schools. We know from past experience that the most effective tool for keeping kids safe uh, is armed law enforcement on the campus. Senator Cruz may have a point. I don't disagree with making schools more secure. But the Texas shooter was engaged by an armed school guard before he even got inside. The guard was shot and Ramos carried on his attack. So the answer to these endless massacres can't always just be more guards or more guns, which are now the leading cause of death for US children, overtaking car accidents. Think about that. Texas already has about twice as many registered guns as any other US state. More than a million of them are registered. The guns didn't stop this tragedy, they caused it. It takes a mentally ill monster to gun down innocent children. But it's also monstrous to watch it happen time and again and do nothing, isn't it? America is a magnificent country with great people. I've lived there and worked for nearly 20 years in the United States, and I love the place. But the level of gun violence is spiraling out of control. The massacres are getting worse and more frequent. It just can't go on like this. Toxic partisan point scoring, which erupts after every one of these terrible atrocities, achieves nothing. Nor do the thoughts and prayers of people in the aftermath. Nor do liberal celebrities screaming abuse at law-abiding conservative gun owners. As I said, it's for Americans to resolve this gun violence crisis, not people like me who are not American. But all I will say tonight as the bullet-ridden bodies of those poor innocent children lie in mortuaries is that surely, surely doing absolutely nothing to prevent this happening again can no longer be an option. We started this show tonight with the story of the 19 children who were shot dead at their school in Ovalde, Texas. These are those children. They were all under the age of 12. They were taken with two of their teachers. I want to take a moment now to tell you the names and ages of every single one of these victims so that we can all fully comprehend what has happened here. Lucia Garcia was eight. Her granddad described him as the sweetest little boy I've ever known. Javier Javier Lopez was 10. He was bubbly and loved to dance. Amory Jo Garza was 10. Her grandmother said she was super outgoing and a teacher's pet. Annabella Guada Lupe Rodriguez was 10 years old. She was an exemplary student. Nevea Bravo's cousin said she's flying with the angels above. 10 year old Ellie Lugo's father described her as a doll and was the happiest ever. Rogelio Torres was 10. His cousin said, it breaks my heart to say my Rogelio is now with the angels. Tess Marie Matter's sister called her a precious angel. Lexi Rubio was 10 and was described as a bright light in everyone's life. Jose Flores was 10 and loved to laugh and have fun. JC Camelo Luavenos, who was 10, and Jayla Nicole Siguero, who was 11, were cousins. The mother of Jayla said of them, fly high, my angels. Ten-year-old Mattia Juliana Rodriguez's cousin described her as a sweet, smart little girl. Ten-year-old Alethea Ramirez's dad said she loved to draw and wanted to be an artist. Eleven-year-old Miranda Mathis's cousin said, we loved you dearly, I'm so sorry this happened. McKenna Elrod was ten. Her sister told us all to hug her loved ones tight tonight and tell them that she loved them. Eliana Elijah Cruz Torres was 10. Her family said she didn't want to go to school on the day of the shooting. 10-year-old Jackie Cazares, her little sister, posted online that she was sorry she forgot to say good morning today. Two teachers also died, 46-year-old Irma Garcia, who taught at the school for 24 years and had four children, along with 44-year-old mother of one, Eva Morales. I took my 10-year-old daughter to school today. Uh, it was just an art exhibition day with all her friends. They were all 10, 11, the same age as these kids that were slaughtered yesterday in Texas. I can't even imagine what those parents are now going through, other than I've spoken to Sandy Hook parents, to Dunblane parents. I have some idea. But it's the ultimate unimaginable horror 
And once again, I just say to America, a country I love, do something about this, please. For the love of God, we have got to stop kids being slaughtered in their classroom. That's all for us tonight.